How's that roast beef treating you? Hey, <laughs> get out of here, you son bitch. Hey guys, Johnny Nerd out here. Got another custom e-bike build for you. Wanna go over it, maybe get some creative juices flowing with you, and maybe get you thinking about if you wanna do a build like this. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm Johnny Nerd out. I am a nerd and I nerd out on things, mainly e-bikes, because like, that's what I do for a living. I take bikes and I convert them into e-bikes. I used to work for manufacturers of e-bikes and I turned my back on them because I found my true purpose. And this is the way to go. So I'm hoping that you guys will also learn what I've learned on my long, long years of journeying through the e-bike industry. Converting a bike is the way to go. So this is a Polygon Cascade. This, this is a bikesonline.com bike. There's a lot of online bike resellers. A lot of people are like, where do I get my bikes? And you can go to Bikes Online, Bikes Direct, REI. You can go direct to Specialize. There's so many places to buy bikes. <laughs> There's too many. Go to your local bike shop is where you should go, support them. But somebody mailed this bike in. This is somebody from Chicago, my hometown, Chicago, what's up? I'm from Chicago and I can't even do a Chicago accent. It's terrible. They sent me this bike, I converted it. I'm gonna put it right back in the same box I got it delivered in, ship them out to Chicago. They're gonna go whip around Ashland, Foster, Lakeshore Drive. I'm gonna start tearing up thinking about Chicago. This is a Entry level mountain bike, I would say, but it does have hydraulic disc brakes, which are really good. Normally that's kind of like a hit or miss on entry level mountain bikes. You may get hydraulics, you may not. Um, so it's got hydraulic disc brakes, came with a bell. Safety first, watch out, I'm gonna mow you down. When you're flying down Clark Street, trying to catch the Cubs game, watch out. So because it has hydraulic disc brakes, we put hydraulic uh, brake sensors on it. So what that does is just two little magnets. When you hit the brakes, it separates those two. And then it tells the motor, hey, don't send any, mo don't send any power to the motor. This guy's trying to stop, or lady. For battery, we went with a 52 volt, 17 and a half amp hour. That's good for over 900 watt hours of power. This is gonna get probably a 40, 40 to 60 mile range, depending on how you're riding it. The shocks, they're sun tours. They're definitely entry level. I was going off road, I was doing my performance tests and I felt them like almost bottoming out, just going over the curb. So I was like, eh. it's better than nothing. It's definitely than, better than having a rigid fork for jumping off of curbs, but this is something that could be uploaded. The only adjustability is the preload, which you know maybe adjusting that to be its firmest might help a little bit. For the motor, we went with the 750 watt Bafang BBSO2 motor. I love these motors, they're totally programmable. You get a $25 programming cable, plug it into your PC, sorry Mac users, and you can totally fine tune all the parameters of this thing, how the motor behaves, how it ramps up. When you hit the throttle, when you hit the pedal assist, how quickly do you want that motor to kick in? Do you want it to be boom or do you want it to be ugh? And how many revolutions do you want it until it kicks in? So if you're off-road, if you're using this for like an off-road mountain bike, Make it so that you gotta do a couple revolutions and then it'll kick in. So if you're doing those tight turns, it's not just gonna be like, whoa, 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 whoa. We put a uh, gear shift sensor in it because this is a mid-drive. This just cuts power, lets you shift gears, protects the chain, protects your rear cassette. Uh, we mounted it here so we could just run it right, right down the seat tube so it's a little bit cleaner. I always, whenever I mount these things, I always find cables. Where, where are other cables going? and just run them along there. There were no other cables going here, so I'm not gonna mount it on its own. It'd be a solo wire. I found the gear shift cable. Just follow that, just go with it. I could have put it here and then ran it here, but it just made more sense, and that way you could elongate that cable so you don't have to bunch it up underneath the motor. Keep it as long as possible so all the cables out and it's laying flat against the frame. Makes it look cleaner. This bike looks clean zip tie everything put don't go cheap on the zip ties zip tie everything so all the cables are nice and tight and i put cable wrap on it so it covers up anything that's could be weird for the display went with a 500c color display really like this display as you guys know if you've seen my other videos next to that is the throttle so if you're feeling lazy just hit the throttle all right let's go do a johnny nerd out performance test where i test this on hill climbing from a standstill and from a running start 
and then I also test the top speed with just the throttle. And no, I don't pedal with these just so you can see what the motor is capable of doing. And obviously if you're pedaling, it's just adding a little bit more to it. Let's go to it. Boom. Yes, yeah, so you can see 37 miles an hour with this thing just on throttle. It is a little windy. I think it's kind of going this way, so it's a little bit at my back, so that might have helped a little bit. But these giant tires are also going to help with top speed. Not so much with climbing, but you can still see this thing climb no problem. <laughs> Absolutely no problem. That's the benefit of the mid-drive using these gears. Power multiplication from the power to your chain ring. Hub motors can't do that. Hub motor will not be climbing like this bike does, and it will not be having a top speed like this one does at the same power. This is more efficient. This is the future. And if you're like, oh, I don't want a whole bunch of power, it's great, you don't need a whole bunch of power. You could dial this thing down to be a 500 watt. If you live in Europe, dial it down to be a 350 or 250, whatever it is. You're still using that 250 watts wisely. Having a 250 watt mid-drive to your low gear is probably similar to having a thousand watt hub motor climbing hills. I, I bet you this thing would still climb better than a thousand watt hub motor would with a 250 watt European, I'm not trying to dish on Europeans, but I'm just saying your standards are insane. 250 watt to a low gear would be the same as a thousand watt hub motor. That would be interesting. I would love to do that test. If somebody has a Hub motor and you live in the Salt Lake area and somebody also has a 250 watt, or we could even dial this one down to 250 watts. Let's do that test. So yeah, this build was about 1250, I wanna say. It's about 1250 um, plus labor and shipping and all that. It's gonna add to the cost, but if you did this on your own, you'd be looking at about 12, 1250 for everything here. Especially if you already have a bike like this, 1250 for something that goes 37 miles an hour and it's gonna give you a 60 mile actual range not at 37 miles an hour but with pedaling at about 20 miles an hour this will give you about a 60 mile range try buying anything pre-made with that kind of performance for that kind of price ain't gonna happen even if you got to buy the bike for 500 bucks you're in about 1700 bucks still not gonna find anything on the pre-made market even close even probably for double that price is where you're gonna start to find that kind of performance anyways later guys